What's up, everybody? My name is Josh, and welcome to our first week of small groups where we're kind of diving into a brand new model of student ministry, and we are so excited that you are with us. So welcome. If you're at the Kellers, what's up? If you're at the Noblets and the Nulls, Hello, if you're at Oak Bridge, we welcome you in as well. And our hope and our goal for this new model is that our relationships with one another and our relationships with God grow even deeper. And we think that the way that we're going to do student ministry from here on out is going to really enable us to have that happen. And so my goal each and every week, if I'm talking each and every week, which it's not going to be me every week, but my goal this week is that you know, we just really have a conversation or at least just a conversation starter where you can kind of be led into a really good discussion in groups. And so I'm just kind of chatting, you know, like I'm drinking coffee here. Um, let me take a quick sip, actually. See, we're just hanging out. I'm going to read from some notes and we're just going to have a good time together. Raise your hand if you're with us for part one of From This Day Forward last week where we kind of dove head first and do some challenging ideas about sex, and even ask some questions in regard to each of those ideas. And the first one was this, sex is binding. Who are you trying to be bound to? Like it's not just a physical activity, it's emotional, it's spiritual. It, it, it affects us mentally. In fact, sex impacts us in the deepest level. So we gotta be careful. And then we went on to say that big sin always starts out small. Do you really wanna flirt with that? Like is it really, is it really worth it? And then we said, your body belongs to God. Your, your body belongs to God. He has purchased you. He's bought you with a high price. The blood of Jesus purchased you for himself. And so do you, do, you, do you live like it? Like if your eyes belong to God, would you really be looking at those images on the screen? If your hands belong to God, would you really be touching your girl or your boy that way? And then we said, God is good. God is really good. Do you trust him? And this is the root of the issue. Maybe the reason that you're searching for love in all the wrong places is that you don't believe that God's love is enough for you. Maybe the reason that you aren't honoring God sexually is because you don't believe that God's plan for sex is right and true and what's best for you. That rhymed. And lastly, we said that you can start over. Do you want to right now? I love this. Like, if you're a Christian, you have been forgiven. You've been washed white as snow no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, but you haven't just been forgiven, you've been freed. You've been freed from the punishment of sin, but also the power of sin so you can start over. And I think this was relevant for a lot of you all the way down to seventh grade. You, you know, we have middle schoolers already being tempted to view pornography and take steps sexually that they know they're not called to take and so our goal is to speak into relevant issues because we don't have time to waste our de our decisions right now are setting us up for the future like they're putting us on a direction decisions determine direction and direction determines destination the decisions that you make right now are directly connected to the destination that you'll arrive at one day when it comes to relationships and love and romance and even marriage and so today we're going to talk about singleness singleness in fact raise your hand if you're single raise your hand keep it up high keep it up high and now you can kind of survey the room look around and see maybe who is boyfriend or girlfriend material you know maybe wink wink at someone if you want to if you don't want to be single for much longer I'm kidding that might keep you single for um, a lot longer but what makes me laugh is that even if I didn't tell you, even if I didn't tell you to look around, like as your hands were up, you can put them down by the way. Some of you are like, I'm keeping them up all night. Like I'm single, right? No, you can put them down. But, but what's funny is that some of you guys, even if I wouldn't have told you to look, you would have been surveying the room. Like who's single? Who's available? Um, who's boyfriend? Who's girlfriend material? In fact, I think for many of us in middle school and high school, we spend a lot of our singleness looking we're looking and we're looking. In fact, we're obsessed with looking and finding the right one. If we just find the right boyfriend or girlfriend, man, life would be so great. We'll date until we get married and it's just going to be awesome. But we want to say this. If you want to, if you want to be successful when it comes to dating and relationships before marriage, instead of working so hard on looking for the right one, work even harder to become the right one. Andy Stanley says it this way, 
Become the person who you're looking for is looking for. I love that. Like in your singleness and middle school and high school, spend this time period to become more like Jesus. Spend this time to become the person that God has created you to be. Become more loving. Become more compassionate. In regards to people of the opposite sex, spend this time developing a worldview that is right. Where you see every human being as as someone who Jesus died for. Someone who is fearfully and wonderfully made. A daughter or a son of God Almighty. Not just an object to be used. Use this time to become the person that God has created you to be. And you might not like this next part, okay? But what I wrote down is that it's much easier to pursue Jesus wholeheartedly when you're single, especially in middle school and high school. It's true. Paul says this. In fact, Paul says, because it's so much easier to pursue Jesus wholeheartedly when you're single, singleness is a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. And... And, and it's not because dating is bad. Like he doesn't encourage you to stay single. Paul doesn't say that singleness is a gift because dating is bad or evil or if you're dating someone, you're super jacked up. That's not what it is. Like if you honor God, dating can be great. It's just dating is distracting. Dating is really distracting, especially in the first few months. You guys know what I'm talking about. If you've had a girlfriend or boyfriend, it's like, you can't stop thinking about them. It's real. It's true. Like the infatuation stage, like this person is perfect. He's on my mind all day. She's on my mind all day. I love him so much, even though I've only known him for a few weeks, you know? So you're texting all the time. You're Snapchatting all the time. There are appreciation posts on Instagram, you know, MCMs, WCWs, right? Like gag me, but it's real. I've been there. I remember when I dated Abby, I would talk to her on the phone late every single night. My parents would have to get on our house phone because I didn't have a cell phone at the time. They'd be like, okay, time for bed. I'm like, okay, please, five more minutes, you know? And, and, and that's just kind of how it is. Dating is distracting even when you go to church. Like, especially if, especially if the first time you went to church with your girlfriend or boyfriend was last week while we were talking about sex, you know, you didn't even hear what I said. You were freaking out on the inside. Do I look at him? Do I look at him? Do I laugh at this? Is this weird? Should I sing loud? Should I put my arm around him? Should I raise my hands during worship? I kind of want to, but is she going to think this is weird? Right? Like, it's distracting. And I'm not saying that you won't think about God or think about becoming the person that God has created you to be when you're dating. I'm just saying you'll think about him less. I'm saying you'll think about him less. And so Paul says that it's better for you in middle school or high school to stay single. And I know that some of y'all are like, I don't want to hear that. Okay, well, quit being so defensive. Paul goes on to say this. I'm saying this for your own good. This is 1 Corinthians 7, 35. I'm saying this for your own good, not to restrict you, but that you may live in a right way, an undivided devotion to the Lord. Essentially, other translations put it this way. Paul would love us to stay single so that we don't have so many dating distractions, right? Like dating is distracting. And so, but honestly, let's be real here. Some of y'all are like singleness is too, and you're right. If we aren't careful, singleness is too. So the first thing that I wanna challenge you to do as you fight to become the person that God has created you to be in singleness is this, eliminate distractions. Eliminate distractions. This is so important. In a time period where you should have the the, the 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 least amount of distractions as possible, I think God is shouting to each and every one of you, like, give me your attention. Give me your focus. Think about me. Love me. Like, serve me. Spend time with me and reflect on me. Focus on me. And those things that get in the way of you doing that, eliminate them. Work hard to eliminate distractions. And so practically before groups, start thinking about this. Okay, you're going to talk about it. But start thinking, what is it for me? What distracts me the most in my singleness, you know, to where I don't spend enough time thinking about God or reflecting on God? What is it? What is it? And it might not be a bad thing. It might be a good thing. It might be sports. It might be, you know, your band your band or your your music or your your grades or your reputation or family stuff it, it might none of it like it might not be bad but 
None of it. There is no thing that is more important than your relationship with Jesus. And even a good thing that becomes more relationship with Jesus, like if a good thing becomes more important than, than, the, most, than the greatest thing, then really it becomes a bad thing in our lives. And so eliminate distractions. Next is this. Pursue devotion. In other words, don't just work on taking things out of your life, but work on replacing those things by putting new things into your life. Devote yourself to God. Let me say it this way. Singleness has a purpose, and its purpose is pursuit. Ben Stewart says that if your moments of singleness aren't defined by a passionate pursuit of Jesus, they will be marked with aimlessness and frustration. So what does it mean for you to pursue Jesus? What does it mean for you to be devoted to Jesus? I think the first thing is this, spending time with him. Right now, you're in a time period in your life where you will have the most free time that you will ever, ever, ever have. Some of you are like, no, I'm busy. I know everyone has busyness in their lives. And so spend time with God. Spend time with God. Sit at his feet. Focus on his word. Focus on his works in our world. Do your best to devote yourself to spending time with him. And we're going to do our best in small groups to teach you what this looks like. Because some of you are like, well, how do I do that? He's an invisible person. He's an invisible deity. We're going to do our best to teach you how to spend time with the one who matters most. Okay, let me recap real quick. This is going to be about one minute here. Singleness is a gift. I'm going to say that unapologetically. Whether you're in middle school, high school, or an adult leader, whether you enjoy singleness or not, singleness is a gift. And some of y'all are like, well, easy for you to say. You're married. I want a man. I want a girl. I want to enjoy life with someone in that context. Let me say this. That's natural. It's normal. There is a tendency in every one of us to downplay the benefits of our stage in life and amplify the benefits of another. But fight that. Enjoy your singleness. Enjoy it. Like, take it for what it is. It is a gift for you to grow in your relationship with Jesus. And it might be challenging at times. You might feel lonely at times, but there are massive benefits to singleness. And I don't want you to... to, to miss the benefits of now because you're fixated on the benefits of then. We want you to enjoy being single. We do. We want you to appreciate it for what it is. It is a gift for you to grow in your relationship with Jesus. It is a gift for you to have undistracted, undivided devotion to your King, to your God. And now the question for each and every one of us is, what is that going to look like for me? If I'm single, what is that going to look like for me? And if you're dating, you might be like, well, I thought we were talking about dating. I thought we were, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you might be single, like quicker than you know. Like your relationship might end. It could always end. But beyond that, we're going to jump into dating next week. We're going to talk about why we date next week. And we are looking forward to it. We'll see you then.